Hi, this is Mr. Kish, and this tutorial is to help you get keyboard control over a sprite in Scratch. And there's a bunch of ways to do this. I'm just going to show you a couple. A really basic way to do it is to use this event block and just base this around the arrow control keys. So let's start with the right arrow. And what we want it to do is two things. We want it to point in a direction and move a certain distance. So as long as this says right arrow and it's pointing to the right, it will always work. So here we go. I'm going to hit the right arrow and every time I hit the right arrow the cat moves. We can also do the same thing. By the way, I just right clicked and duplicated that. And now I'm going to set it up for the left arrow. Here we go. So right arrow still moves it to the right, left arrow moves it to the left. Now I have a couple options here, and if I click on the little information tab for the sprite, I can set its rotation style. So if I set this rotation style, it will end up going upside down, which is a little strange. I can turn off the rotation style, and now it just moves backwards or forwards, or I can only allow it to flip right or left, which works for this style. So. Remember, you might want to change your rotation style based on the type of keyboard control you're using. So this is one way, and then I could add up and down as well. However, I'm going to show you another way. I'm, I'm actually going to show you several ways, but here's one other way to do this. You start with uh, the green flag, and then in the control, I'm going to set a condition. So I'm using an if-then block, and what I want to put in there is if a key is pressed, so if the right arrow is pressed, point in that direction and move 10 steps. And I could do the same thing with the left arrow, make it point to the left, and I'm right clicking and duplicating that whole thing again. And I can also do the up arrow, which will move it up. I didn't let me change that. There we go. And down arrow will move down. So if I place this on and run it and hit the keyboards, nothing happens. And the reason nothing is happening is when I click the green flag, this script ran. None of these conditions were true and it got to the bottom. So if I want if I want these conditions to be able to execute at any point, I have to then put them all in a forever loop. So I put the forever loop under the green flag and I put all of these in there and I click on the green flag and now the cat will move at any point and that works pretty well. Alright, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use this code again. So I'm gonna load it into the backpack right there and that way I can use it with other sprites and for right now I'm going to disconnect this and I'm going to hide that sprite. Now the next sprite I'm going to show up is this little one which is a tank and I'm going to show you a different way of controlling it which works for a tank. So I just got that same code out of the backpack and added it to this one and I'm going to leave the rotation style so it'll rotate all the way around. So right arrow and left arrow are going to be a little different. What I'm going to do with the tank is when I hit the right arrow, I'm going to have it turn to the right. And left arrow, I'm going to have it turn to the left. And then instead of pointing in a direction, I'm just going to have it move some steps with these. So let's see, up arrow, how about we have the up arrow be forward, which will be 10 steps, and the down arrow will be backwards which will be negative 10. So let me click this, and now if I push the up arrow, the tank moves forward. If I push to the right, it rotates to the right, to the left. If I hit the backwards one. And if I don't like how far that turns, I can always change it to 10 degrees. If I actually wanted to make it more like a real tank, I'd probably do 5 degrees. It'll rotate slower. Let's click that. Here we go and now you see it rotates a little slower. And the cool thing about this is I can hold down the forward or reverse one 
and have it turn. And this one is just one other way to uh, add keyboard control to a sprite. So I'm going to disconnect that and I'm going to hide the tank. And then I'm going to move on to the next sprite. This is the third and last sprite. And this is one other way. So I'm going to show this and I have a, a little ninja here with a sword. And this one's going to be just a tiny bit different. So I'm going to start once again with our code from our backpack. This is the code that I used for the cat. Except this one's going to be a little bit different. Instead of pointing in directions, I'm going to change its XY coordinates. And over here you might have noticed are the XY coordinates of this sprite. And zero zeros in the middle, and the X axis goes, I'm sorry, the X axis goes across, and the Y axis goes up and down. So I can change X. So when I hit the right arrow, I can change X. Left arrow will change X. Up and down are on the Y axis, so I want to change it by Y. Now the up arrow will go positively on the Y axis. The down arrow will go negatively. You know what, I should probably, let me just switch these. We'll go to positive numbers first, negative numbers second. All right, right arrow on the x-axis would be positive 10, left arrow would be negative 10. All right, let's run this and see what happens. So now the ninja will move, but the ninja's rotation has nothing to do with its position. And I'm going to add one other thing to this, which is a little different, and this is, this is just a feature you might want in your game, and I'm going to have the ninja point towards the mouse pointer. So when I run all of these, the ninja will now face the mouse pointer, but will move based on the keyboard. So you have keyboard control of this sprite, but the sprite can rotate around the stage based on where the mouse points. So you have two different things controlling it. So hope this helps you. Have fun programming your game. Once you're done, uh, remember that you want to look up here and if it says saved, your project has been saved. Otherwise, you can always go to the file button, save now, save a copy. You could download it to your own computer or let me make some changes. There we go. You can click Save Now, and if you've signed in, that's the easiest way to do it. It'll save it to the Scratch website, and that project will be there whenever uh, you go back to it. After this video, if you want to check this project out, just click on the button, and it'll take you right to this project page.